guys, this is Faye, Diamond in the Rough, and uh, how are you guys going today? Um, okay, so, yum yum box. Today's date is the 16th of March. Uh, this box is the February yum yum box, and it's taken me this long to get around to doing it. This is actually my last yum yum box. Uh, I did, I when I purchased this, I did it as a six month gift to myself um, because I didn't want to do a subscription every month I thought if I go for six months I'll see how it goes and then from there I will um, decide whether I want to continue on I've already decided I'm not going to continue on which is probably why this one is still why well, this one's about a month late okay so this one uh, for anyone that's already been watching the Yum Yum boxes, this is actually uh, February's box. And these yums travelled all the way from where people learned their hearts. So February, uh, hearts, Valentine's, it would have to be France. <laughs> okay, so one of the reasons why I'm not going to continue on is not many people actually watch these videos of mine for the Yum box. The other is the fact that there is always so much dark chocolate and I can't eat dark chocolate that much. Um, I'm not a big eater of dark chocolate. And going by some of you guys and the comments you make, um, you know, like, some of you don't like the dark chocolate either. So, France. Let's see if it's gonna zoom and focus on this stuff. Maybe I should have watched some, so then I was pre-worn. But here we go. So this is actually the France box with the uh, games to play on the back. And um, yeah, we'll uh, have a have a go through, have a look at it. So this is the way the box is packed. And um, my booklet for France to go through and have a look at what's in the bag. Um, I will say, for the first box I got, I had a little label on the inside here that said one of six. Not getting that label this time. So I, I don't know whether I got it on any of my others. Uh, but yeah, what have we got? Welcome. We've got one question. Is there any country in the world more obsessed with love than France? And a follow-up to that is... Uh, and a follow-up to that. Is it possible to go to France and not fall in love? France loves love in all its puzzling forms. You can see what passion looks like from the masterpieces of the Monet and Degas and, or read it in the pages of romance novels like Madame Bouveret. You can e even hear what love sounds like thanks to Frenchman René Lenec who invented the stethoscope in 1816. But we're most concerned with falling in love with some brand new yums. We've found the most tantalizing truffles enchanting aged cheeses and an irresistible salty caramel so now we're waiting for our answer to the question is it possible to go to France and not fall in love we think not okay uh, I will say clues to next month box I already know what next month's box is but I'm not getting it anyway next month an expedition is in store down the Rio we'll search from shore to shore not for critters for something even more Chilies, passion fruit, and yums beyond compare. It's actually Brazil. <laughs> and those boxes are probably being unboxed right now. Okay, so. Uh, I will put down below the link if you are interested in doing it. Um, I am supposed to get, um, I think, $5 off my next yum box in relation to that. Obviously, I won't be doing that. So if you do purchase... Um, I won't get anything from it. I think you guys might get a discount, but I'm not sure. Okay. So let's move this box out of the way and we start pulling them out. As we go. Okay, hang on. Just trying to get things into place here. I'm not blocking the light. Okay. Brett's. Right spot, you can't do that. Brits. Okay, Brits, you fromage 
du jour. Okay, these are chips. Try it quite simply. Chips. Where's my scissors? There we go. Did you know the average... So this is <laughs> floral cheese flavoured potato chips. I've got my glasses on so I don't need to hold this up to the camera to show it, to read it. Did you know the average French person eats 60 pounds of cheese per year? It sounds like a lot, but they have an incredible number of different varieties to try. Okay, uh, just trying to get that in the best way for you guys to see that. 1,600 to be exact. For this chip, we'll focus on one variety, Comte, a sweet floral cheese from the French Comte province in eastern France to make the cheese Every cow is treated to two full acres of pastures to roam, plus a diet of 100% natural food. The fresh milk is immediately rushed to the production site where it's crafted into cheese wheels and then matured for at least four months. The result, an incredibly distinctive, delicious cheese. One bite of these chips and you might find yourself wishing for 60 pounds worth. Okie dokie. Oh yeah. Okay. And yep, a package that's a half full. Let's see how it goes. Do I admit that I'm nervous about some of the foods in this box? I think I already have. But, hi. Oh, hey. <coughs> oh, too big a whiff. Can smell the cheese. As I say, it's a half a packet. So this is going to really smell. So what do we got? It's a crinkly cheese. Crinkly cheese. Crinkle cut chip. Oh, and it's a smell. Uh, as I put it up to my mouth, I can really smell that cheese smell. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, okay, some cheeses to me smell like dirty socks. This is close to, but not quite. Um, I won't even, like normally with the chips I'll go, oh yeah, I'll have another one while I'm doing the, doing the recording. I'm not going another one. Um, I'll see, uh, I'll admit to this box, I'll tell Nathan about these and he'll, he'll probably into them. Okay, so. I might get used to them. No, I don't know if I will. Next one is the Truffle Bar by Methes. So that's this blue Oh, okay. So this box arrived in summer, February. One of our hottest months. And you can see it's actually, it's actually melted. But that's not their problem, that's mine. On a side note, Australian chocolate is different to anywhere else in the world because it's been modified in a way that it doesn't melt as easily in the heat. <laughs> because chocolates here melt quite, quite easy when they're not from Australia, not Australian chocolates. Okay, a law, according to legend, this yum came about completely by accident. In the 1920s, confectioner Augusta Escoffier he was making a pastry cream when he accidentally poured hot chocolate into a bowl of chocolate. Hot cream into a bowl of chocolate. Instead of a bowl of sugar and eggs. Rather than bidding the melty chocolate adieu, he began experimenting. He quickly realised the chocolate paste, called ganache, could be moulded. So he rolled it into balls. But he couldn't just leave the gooey balls like that. So he coated them in cocoa powder. The result, a delicious chocolate ball that looks a lot like France's mushroom truffles. Hence the name. We can't think of a more delicious accident except maybe devouring all four of these decadent cocoa truffles for anyone else who can. Okay, so this is where we go. Is it, what type of chocolate is in there? Is it milk chocolate? Is it dark chocolate? And uh, how melted is it? <laughs> okay, this, I'll zoom this up to this camera. I don't know whether you can see it. But 
but that is melted chocolate in there. That's, you can't see the silver wrapping. No, it's not going to zoom on it. Okay. Let's see if I can show you how melted that is. No, it's not even going to do that. The inside of this silver, normally you get the silver foil like that. It's all brown. That's not because I haven't opened it. This has been, obviously this arrived and it's been inside. Um, but that's what chocolates, if you send chocolates to someone in Australia in summer, and it goes via Australia Post, and it sits on your doorstep for even half an hour, this is what happens to it. So I can't show you what it looks like properly. Eek. But I can tell you what it tastes like. And it doesn't look like dark chocolate, but then I've been fooled before. Okay, it's not dark chocolate. Mm. Oh yum. Oh yum, that's nice. Okay, I'm going to be eating that out of the packet. Hang on. That's really nice. Mmm. Okay. I like the truffles bar. It's a pity that it melted. Hang on. There we go, you can see that. But I do like that. That one I'll have to eat very soon now. <laughs> as in, as soon as I finish recording. <laughs> okay, yum, I like that one. Okay, now, next, Les Sables de la Mer. Pollard. Watch out, the main ingredient in this famous French shortbread is sand. But this is delicious sand. Sableus are centuries old cookies made by rubbing cold butter into flour and sugar to form tiny particles of dough. Given the dough's striking resemblance to sand, these fine golden brick bread comes came to be called sable, the French word for sand. So yes, these delectable cookies are made with sand, but we're talking about the very buttery and very edible kind, not the kind you'd find on the beaches of the French Rivieres. Okay, where are we? Okay. I didn't see it on top, so I'll have to wait until I dug in. Okay, there we go. It's got 1888 on it. <clears throat> Pure butter biscuits. So I love the way they're packaged, that's quite sweet. But to open them. Uh, for those guys that have been watching my channel, uh, no, I still haven't had my nails done since my camping trip. <laughs> okay, here we go, little packet. They actually do have the 1888 on them. There's no mention why it's got the 1888 on it. And because it's written in French, I can't translate it. Maybe. Okay. Oh, that smells really nice. They do smell nice. Okay. I suppose I'll have to eat a full biscuit unless I absolutely don't like it, but here we go. Oh. Mmm. To me, not quite a shortbread, short, um, shortbread biscuit. It's lighter than a shortbread biscuit. That's really nice. All right. That one sits above the chocolate. Excuse me while I finish eating this biscuit. This is yummy. I wonder if my yum microphone's picking up the crunch, crunch, crunch. But this is yummy. Yep. Okay. Now, this is, we get in Australia our salt and vinegar chips of this cup colour. So I'm presuming this is salt and vinegar chips. <coughs> Sibel chips, savour vinaigrette. That's, oh well, it's just saying vinegar potato chips. Bordeaux is famous for its vineyards. Paris is famous for its high-end restaurants. But what about the city of Orleans 
direct lying directly between the two. Hint, look at these chips. Yep, it's famous for vinegar. <coughs> between the 13th and 17th centuries, countless barrels of wine will go sour on its way from Bordeaux to Paris rather than take the loss. Savvy merchants in Orleans sold the spoiled wine as vinegar. Hence the name vinegar from the French vin aigu, meaning sour wine. Okay. Merchants decided the merchant's decision turned out to be anything but sour. The Orleans vinegar industry exploded. Today Orleans vinegar vinegar is used across France from everything to for everything from cleaning supplies to vinaigrettes to perfectly crunchy, delightfully tangy potato chips like these. And you've got to admit, vinegar chips sounds better than sour wine chips. <laughs> yeah, it does. I'm just hoping there's a bit of salt on those because that's this is the colour we our Australian salt and vinegar chips um, have. Okay, it's more than half a packet, which is a good thing. But here we go. So. I'm wafting the favourite, the smell, before I actually put it to my face, just in case it's harsh. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, it, yeah, it smells like, funnily enough, it, close to our salt and vinegar chips without smelling the salt, so yeah, it's the vinegar. I just want a little one. Here, I'm probably going to go eat and eat some because I'm so used to salt video like this. But, oh! Does need the salt, but the vinegar chips are yummy. Oh, there you go. There's a bit of a, a bit of a bite, but only just that slight tang of the vinegar that you, you know, you know when you have vinegar, you've got that slight little ting. Oh yeah. Another good yum, another good yum. You see the difference between that one, I had a couple of, and that one, just the one. <laughs> okay, let's turn the page. Excuse me, and my itchy nose, as per usual. Why not seem like it's a thick page, thick paper? Okay, mini roll. Raspberry mini roll. Cake roll with raspberry filling, which looks like, yep, that one. France practically invented dessert. No, really, the word dessert comes from the French deserve, meaning to clear the table. And rest assured, when it comes to France's world-renowned desserts, there's never a problem clearing the table. These delectable raspberry swell cakes are first-hand proof. Instantly, you'll get a fragrant whiff of real French raspberries. Take a bite and taste the pitch perfect ratio of fluffy, soft cake to sweet, syrupy raspberry jam. One thing's for certain, dessert doesn't ha dessert has to be one of France's best inventions. <coughs> okay, so it is a bit spongy. I can feel that if you can feel that it's a sponge roll in there, or well, a spongy cake in there. Oh, that looks really cool. Okay, I'm not going to bite into this one. This is one I cut into. Uh, normally I take these treats in to work and share them around uh, at work. Um, these won't be going to work this time because uh, I am not at work for another till the first of Feb till the first of um, April. So I've actually taken some leave off. So these won't be going to work. These I will be eating myself or like that one giving it to Nathan. But oh. You can smell the raspberry. Well, that smells really good. So that was really nice. Really, really, really mm, yum. I don't know if Nathan will get any of that one, but we'll see. Okay, Sibel Tube, a Grignata fromage. 
Okay, guys. Seriously? Cheese flavoured tube snacks. But I'm looking at... How can I pronounce that? Oh, well. We have shocking news. Are you sitting down? Okay, here goes. In France, people don't really snack. I'll put a gasp in there. We know, we know. It sounds crazy, all right, but let's be clear. The French still enjoy munching on chips, crisps and crackers. They just save them for pre-dinner course called the aperitif. During this start, of course, French folks gather for casual conversation, a glass of wine and a savoury snack designed to whet appetites for the meal to come. The cheesy guignol, grig, grignota, French for nibble, is in your, in your box, is made specifically for the occasion. Feel free to do as the French do and save this snack for right before dinner. Just be extra careful not to spoil the main course. Okay, so that is this one. Mm. Chewed aggregator. This is a mouse in the packet. How cute. Mouse and cheese. Okay, so this is mm -hmm. cheese flavoured tube snacks. So let's see if this gives the same smell as the last lot of cheese stuff. Cute little tubes. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, going to be in that range. <laughs> well, sorry, that range. That one's got a class of its own. Just trying to see if I can find a small tube. Look at that. That looked really, 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 really good. Yeah. Make watch pippy. Okay, so these are. Let's see what it sounds tastes like. Up close and personal, it smells like mm, cheese. Okay. Mm. Oh, I was nervous about nothing. <laughs> They're nice. Slightly tasted cheese. Only slightly. Um, but yeah, I like those ones. Woohoo! I'm doing well. But straight out. Samoy dark chocolate with sea salt crystals. <sighs> now, because this is packed flat, I am hoping that it hasn't melted. Um, one thing about chocolate, if it's packed like this, it tends not to melt. Um, but we will soon find out. Okay. You've never had chocolate this fancy before. This special bar contains crystals of fleur de sel, a gourmet French sea salt. When highly concentrated seawater evaporates, a delicate crust of crystal salt flowers forms. Trained workers called polydeurs use special wooden rakes called luce fleurs to gently collect this crust. The process, is, the process is extremely slow. The most productive marshes only produces two pounds per day, making a fleur de sel very expensive. It's been dubbed the caviar of sea salt. Woohoo! So, what makes it worth all this time and money? Well, fleur de sel contains more moisture and minerals than typical sea salt, giving it a saltier, longer lasting flavour. When blended with decadent dark chocolate, it makes an extra, an extra luxurious experience unlike any other, as you're about to find out. Okay. Um, yep. Dark chocolate, and the funny thing is, Pat, the only thing that is in French is that. Everything else, oh, maybe the name. What is on the back? Oh, they've actually, <laughs> so that you can read it, is all of that on the back is, is English. But let's see, do I go from top? Oh, no, got to go from the top. In silver foil. Okay. Try and care 
so we just don't want to tear that first section. Yep, dark chocolate. Okay. Try and tear this down a bit. It hasn't melted, which is a good thing. I will turn it over so you see what the top looks like. That's actually quite nice. Do you see the pattern on that? Okay. A little bit soft. Okay, wrap that back up. There we go. My guessing is, this is a, automatically I'm packing up because I know I'm not going to have any more. My guessing is it's, um, Nathan will like this one anyway. Okay, yeah, it's got that definite dark chocolate taste to it. So, smell to it. This is the reason why I'm stopping doing these. One of the reasons. Okay. I can taste the sea salt in it. I'm not feeling it in there. But I'm, no, no, there we go. Hmm. I just got the grains of the sea salt. But I will say that's actually quite nice. Not, I, it, it isn't something I would deliberately purchase. Oh God, my mouth is probably all dark chocolate now. Um, but yeah, that is actually nice. Yeah, I can eat that. The salt seems to be taking out that bitter taste, which is really weird to have salt taking out a bitter taste of the chocolate. Because that's the thing, dark chocolate is a more bitter taste. But as soon as you crunch onto a little bit of sea, sea salt, which you can, you just feel it. That sea salt just, yeah. I suppose it makes me salivate a bit more. But yeah, I like that one. I will put it on my plate and I will eat it after I've finished uh, the recording. Um... No, it's still not rated high though. Okay. <laughs> Frazy boo. <laughs> oh. Hard candy. Okay. If you love chewy strawberry candies, if you love strawberries, think France. In the 14th century, French royals were the first to farm the fruit. King Charles V had a whopping... 1,200 strawberry plants in his garden and in the late 18th century it was France who crossbred two New World strains the Virginia strawberry and the Chilean white strawberry to create the modern strawberry you know and love even today France is still innovating the fr pr country produces one of the most coveted strawberry varieties in the world the Groguette don't know if I pronounced that one right. Famous for its intense sweetness. And the French don't just excel at growing strawberries, they also excel at making strawberry sweets. We're not the only ones who think so. These chewy, juicy strawberry candies were top voted in our last France box. The only thing left to say, merci. Okay, so these are chewy. They're a little bit firm. Okay. Let's see how we go. Oh, yum. Oh, mm, they smell good. They smell good. Okay, are they? There's a little bit of squishiness. Not, it's not a rock hard candy. Oh. Oh, um, <laughs> I'm trying to think what it, how to explain it. Um, for anyone that eats Mentos, 
the fruit Mentos um, in Australia. It's chewy like that, where it's semi-sticking to my teeth as I'm chewing it, but not sticking hard. Um, I do like that. I want to grab another one. I need another one, but um, I won't because it's taking me forever to chew through this one. But mm, nice, nice. I'll put that one there actually. Okay, next. How's this for a big box? Let's see how well uh, this lasted. Whether it melted. So. Jack Jackwafts almond truffles, almond flavored truffles. Yum. Mmm, sounds good. In France, there's no such thing as too many almonds. One peek inside a Parisian sweets shop is all the proof you need. In the pastry section, you'll find croissants coating in sugary sliced almonds and doughy puffs filled with a luscious almond cream in the candied aisle. Candy aisle. You'll find draggies, candy coated almonds and Kelly Swans candy fruit and almond jellies. And in the cake display you'll see master see almond masterpieces like Phineas's Phineas's Madeleines and Gris, Crispy Galettes Deroys. Okay, seriously. If you can see the ones that are you know, italics. But if there's one sweet to convince you that the French's almond obsession is totally warranted, it's these decadent dark chocolate truffles. One taste and you'll be just as nuts for almond sweets as the French are. And what did they say? Dark chocolate. Seriously, let it go. Stop being annoyed about getting dark chocolate. Let's see how we... Mm. Okay, it looks like it's meant to be open there, but I can't open it that way. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Oh. Nope. Watch me bat if I try and get into this. I want to be able to reseal the box up. Ah, ah, there we go. Which, that's what that tab is, is to go into that little slot to reseal it. Let's see, did it melt? Oops, okay. Yeah. Okay. This is not <laughs> this has all melted together. Let's put that up there. Yeah. It's all melted together. Now, you can see what resembles... Oh my goodness. Okay. If I can get the light right... Uh, hang on, I'm just trying to work out if I can get you to see. There we go. And I don't mean to be weird. Hang on, I'm going to have to cut this open. I'll cut that open now. My first impression of this is not good. Okay. Because, um, I'm sorry to say it, guys, but if you have horses, you might recognise what this looks like with it melted like that. Ah. <sighs> This, this this actually looks yeah I know it it does not look attractive um, okay top corner have a look at that camera because it's melted I'm, this is it I mean I suppose the perfect time to start getting the chocolate ones is probably through the winter months for us but this is the winter months for the northern hemisphere okay so there is to do 
it going to focus on that or is it just going to focus on my nails? And it still looks like a pattern. Okay, if you've got horses, this is, it looks like this. And I know it's not supposed to look like this. So I've got chocolate on my hand now. I've got chocolate on my fingers. And... Oh, excuse me for that. It's a typical dark chocolate that I just don't like. I couldn't taste almond. Whether it's further inside that little piece I broke off, I don't know. Um, but it's hard to eat something and enjoy something when you're not able to eat it as it's normally presented. Um, but yeah, okay. That's actually my least favourite. I was so hopeful because I had other chocolates in here from them and it was other chocolate here and uh, I liked but that is actually my least favourite. Okay, so we're on to the bit where because I got the yum yum box, we get the yum bag. So the yum bag is basically lollies. Yum bag, a visit to the bonbon shop. No trip to France is complete without a visit or two or three to the local bonbon shop. Bonbon is the French word for candy, literally translating to good good. That extra good name couldn't be more fitting for this scrumptious selection of French sweets. Our advice, savour them because in the blink of an eye these bonbons will be gone gone. And Considering the climate we are in today, um, there's no chance of going to France at the moment. Um, or there's no chance of going anywhere at the moment. Everybody is petrified of everything because, uh, yeah. I won't go on to that one. I'll keep that one for later. My opinion on that in a later video. Okay. So, first ones that we're looking at is... Okay, guys, read it yourself. Tete's Brulees, tropical peach tea and cola flavoured chews with sour filling. Mmm. Consider yourself warned. This super sweet, this super sour sweet is about to blow your mind. No, we're not being dramatic. This candy's name, Tete's Brulees, literally translates to burnt heads. Don't worry, they won't actually set your head on fire, but their extreme sour filling is much more intense than the sour candies you're probably used to. And we're looking at you, Sour Patch Kids. Okay. With a tang with tangy flavours like peach tea, tropical fruit, and zingy cola, they provide an explosively mouth-watering experience. Pop one in your mouth and decide for yourself. Are we being dramatic? Or do these sour candies live up to their mind-blowing name? Ooh. Bye. Bye bye. I'm gonna be cruel. I give my dog a lot of stuff. Bye bye. What's this? What's this? You gonna sit? Good boy. <laughs> mm, okay. My dog just sniffed that and sniffed it and sniffed it. You gonna try it? Okay, he finally did take it. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> yeah. It's gone. He ate it. No, and he looks like he's asking for more. Sorry, buddy, that was it. I just liked your reaction that you didn't like the smell of it. Okay, let's give a go at this Tet's Brulees. Okay, so it's orange. Tropical peach tea and cola flavoured chews with sour filling. Hang on. I'm going to roll that one out because that... Okay. There is... You can tell the difference between them. Hang on. I'm going to be fussy because I can see one that says 
looks like it's cola whereas that one's peach tea so I'm going to actually open the cola one which is actually a different colour there we go no smell to it so let's see how we go oh Oh, I, I just squeezed into that and it popped with a major. So that little, Kayla, can we see that? Little bit of goo that came out of that. Let's just squeeze that. That is the sour. Which is very sour. All right. Oh, you've got stuck on my lip then. Mm. Oh. 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 <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, that, that's so sour. Oh. Oh. Now that the sour is basically gone, I can taste the cola. Holy shoot. I might just put them on the bench for Nathan to try and not warn him. The chewy candy bit is really nice, right? That's sour. Holy cow. Mmm. Sorry, guys. Oh. Holy cow! Extremely sweet, extremely sour. And funnily enough, I want another one because I wanna. I, I, I it was sour. It was a strong sour, but in a way, I want to try another one. But mm, yeah, no more. They will definitely be going uh, on the kitchen bench. And quietly leave them for Nathan to give a try. And obviously I'm going to watch him while he tries them. <laughs> Is that wrong on me? Okay, so. Whoa. Mm. I'll eat them above the, before the chocolate. I'll tell you that much. Caramels con fleur de sel. Salted butter caramels. Now that's more like it. Let's bring them out. I will grab the little littlest one of them. Uh, salted caramel is a classic, right? Considering its popularity, you might think so. But the flavour is less than 50 years old. It was only in 1977 that French confectioner Henri Lee Roux set out to make a new candy using the famous sea salted butter from the Brittany region. After three months of experimentation, he debuted the salted butter caramel, and it was an instant hit. By 1980, it was voted the country's best candy. By 2000, high-end American restaurants caught wind of the flavor. By 2008, it had gone totally mainstream with both Hagen Das and Starbucks debuting debuting salted caramel products. With this bonbon you'll taste the salted caramel that started it all and find out for yourself why this French flavour is here to stay. I love salted caramel. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Um, I've had uh, Greek donuts with nuts and uh, salted caramel sauce poured over them. Oh, they were yum. But here we go. Oh, nice and chewy. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yum. Um, what can I say? It's yeah, that salt and caramel, and it is yummy. Mmm. Oh, best thing in the box. And while I'm doing that, I'm reading the next one. And it's got me worried. Because those candies, teats brulees, it's teats brulees good collar. Making me nervous. And they are sour collar bars. I'm actually not sure if I want to try it. <laughs> okay. Picture this. It's 1948. World War II is over and France is liberated, in part thanks to the American troops. The Coca-Cola Company decides to introduce Coke to the French market, hoping to capture on America's good standing with France. What do you think that happened next? Did the French even try it? Did they spit it out in disgust? Did they relish it with wide-eyed wonder? The answer is all of the above. Coke's French debut got all sorts of reactions from folks. Some folks poured it into the gutter, some spit it out, and some sipped it with a smile. Despite the initial mixed reaction, France has since come to love the drink. Today, it's just as popular there as it is in the US. Keep all this in mind as you sample this cap cola candy. Your first reaction to its soundness might be to spit it out, but we think you'll end up smiling, even if it's through puckered lips. Okay, you saw my reaction to those. Yeah, okay. I actually am drinking Coke, so. I'm nervous. I'll get away with taking those to work. I have a couple of people that I reckon it would be really appropriate to give to them. Um, but I would have to tell them. Well, let's see what my reaction is, but I may have to tell them they can't do it while they're actually on the uh, board with their headsets on, on the radio. Because they might not be able to talk. So, here goes. Okay, it has the cola smell. <laughs> and it looks like caramel. <laughs> Okay. I get nervous. I don't know how much how I'm gonna to have to cut that one. Hang on. Just cut that much off. Do I get nervous and go maybe I should I can I can smell the sourness on that. Okay, I'm only going to have half of that. Let's see how we go. <clears throat> you can tell I'm nervous. Whew. Okay, there's a zing as soon as it hits the tongue. Oh. Um, how did I make it very sour? Funnily enough, it's not too, sorry this is just because it's getting stuck in my teeth, it's not too bad, I'm not fighting it like I was the, the candy balls with the sour filling, um, I will put it away for now, <laughs> but I will finish that one off definitely, that's not going to get thrown out, um, but I will take those to work. I think that's uh, work for all these. Definitely for the work guys, the guys at work. Okay. So that is it for the Yum Yum box and the Yum Yum boxes. My subscription that I have, my six boxes. I've done my six boxes. Um, so the caramel oil is up top. I think I've actually put the candies above the biscuits. And then I go the biscuits. 
the chips, the truffles, no, the chips, the mini roll, the truffles, then I'd go the tubes. Uh, the dark chocolate, then I'd go that, then that, and then uh, the uh, truffle boxes. And these are all where you can't see where I'm pointing to. Um, what can I say? I have tried it all. Um, I will, what a way to end on a sour lolly, but yeah. I will say, guys, thank you for watching the Yum Yum Box experience. Um, and I know some of you, you guys out there are saying, you're loving my facial expressions. I hope you enjoy those ones <laughs> with those sour lollies. Um, yeah, I can't say anything more except, guys, thank you for watching and bearing with me. Let me know. What's your opinion on some of these? Um, how are you? The big one is, how are you with sour stuff? This is the first time I've had anything that's actually a sour uh, in the boxes. And uh, my reaction was... Uh, yeah, not touching those again. Funny to watch other people leave, but not for me. So guys, yeah, uh, leave your comments down below. Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. Um, subscribe and uh, hit the bell. I think my last count, I'm getting closer to the to the magic number. Um, yeah, slow, ever, ever want so slowly, but um, still have fun doing it. So yeah, guys, I will say thank you for watching and. Um, yeah, bye for now.